Hi everyone, welcome to this integration session of pediatrics and surgery. I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma, your pediatric faculty and we have the iconic mentor in surgery, Dr. Raja Mahindran sir with us. So, uh, the topic we are going to discuss is one of the very frequently asked topics in NEET PG exam as well as INICT exam that is intersusception. I am saying it beforehand because the diagnosis obviously will be clear in the question that will be I will be showing you. But there are certain points related to intersusception that are extremely important if you look at the recent trends. So, let us have a look at the question and then go in depth into the topic. So, question says an 8 month old male child presented to hospital emergency with complaints of sudden onset crying episodes. Sudden onset crying, think of probable abdominal pain. Along with two episodes of vomiting, there was also one episode of red current jelly stool. So, whenever you have an infant with vomiting, pain, abdomen and red current jelly stools, I think the diagnosis should be clear. The child was diagnosed as intersusception and was managed conservatively. Which among the following is incorrect regarding this topic? So, look at the four options now. The options are, first of all, palpable abdominal mass is found in 70% cases. According to Nelson 21st edition, in 30% cases, there is no palpable abdominal mass, while in 70%, you will be able to palpate a sausage-shaped abdominal mass. So, option A is a true statement. Option number B, you know that uh, intersusception is majorly of iliocolic variety. However, ilioiliar variety can also be seen in certain children, particularly those below 2 years of age. So, younger the child, the higher is the prevalence of ilioiliar intersusception. intersusception. Having said that, the overall variety of intersusception, I think it remains to be iliocolic. So, option B is also partially correct. Ultrasound abdomen has a sensitivity more than 98%. It is a true statement. In ultrasound abdomen is the investigation of choice for these patients. It has a sensitivity between 90 to 100% and specificity almost 98%. If there is a doubt, you can always go in for contrast anema. But usually, ultrasound abdomen along with the clinical picture is good enough to make the diagnosis. So, option C is also true. What we are left with, the option number D, which by exclusion is the answer of choice. Spontaneous reduction, according to Nelson, is seen in only 8 to 10 percent cases. The remaining will require some degree of management. Now, whether you are going to do a surgical management or a non-surgical management, obviously, sir will be talking more about it. So, the answer to this question is D option. So, what are the key points about intersusception for a rapid, quick revision that you need to know? So, first of all, intersusception already asked MCQ point in the past, it is the most common cause of intestinal obstruction in age 5 months to 3 years. That is the first point, it is also an MCQ point. Secondly, uh, what exactly is happening in, in intersusception? There is a lead point through which, around, around which there is a invagination or telescoping of one intestinal segment happening upon itself. The part which goes inside is called as intersusceptum, whereas the receiving part, the outside part is called as intersusceptiens. So, there is always a confusion between these two. Remember that intersusceptiens is the receiving part, whereas the inside moving part is the intersusceptor, right? And this will, uh, what it will do is, when the part which will invaginate inside, it will also pull the mesentery inside. There will be compression of the blood vessels, venous engorgement will happen, and this will lead to slowing of the mucosa, producing the typical red current jelly stools, right? Other points, uh, etiology wise, 90% patients are found to be idiopathic, whereas 10% have an associated disorder, identifiable disorder like HSP, mucus diverticulum, which tend to produce a lead point. And uh, most common variety is iliocolic. However, less than 2 years can also have ilioilian variety, right? Now, regarding the clinical picture, when will you suspect these patients? They will have abdominal pain. Abdominal pain is typically severe in nature and it is intermittent, colicky in character. Along with that, you will find that these children are found to be extremely lethargic. There is vomiting. Now, vomiting usually is bilious vomiting, but in very early cases, in the first 7 to 8 hours, up to 10 hours, you will find that sometimes non-bilious vomiting can also be present. So, character of vomiting is something which we should not pay much uh, importance, particularly in an intersusception case. And 60% will have a red current jelly stool. How will this red current jelly stool look like? It is something like this. So, remember this picture, this is how a typical red current jelly stool will look like. Then examination wise, you will have abdominal mass in 70% cases. It is a sausage shaped abdominal mass which with, with a concavity which is pointing towards the umbilicus and there is also a sign called as dance sign which indicates emptiness in the right iliac fossa. So, this is the typical location of the abdominal mass which will be present in the right upper abdomen and its concavity will be pointing towards the umbilicus. And uh, Nelson says that the typical triad that you have been uh, reading throughout that triad of pain, mass and bloody stool 
actually in pediatric patients it is seen in less than 30 percent of the patients regarding investigation uh, i have already told you ultrasound abdomen is the investigation of choice it has a 98 to 100 percent sensitivity and it has about 98 percent specificity so this is the investigation of choice ultrasound abdomen when you look at uh, when you do ultrasound in a transverse view you will find that there is a sign called as target sign which is frequently seen in these patients. So, it is not seen in longitudinal axis, it is seen in transverse view, target sign will be seen. And contrast enemas can be done if there is a doubt. Contrast enema when you do, you may uh, a sign called as coiled spring sign has been described for contrast enemas. But regarding the management, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, confusion in the mind of students and confusion even in the mind of uh, budding pediatricians and that is where the role of surgeons come into play. So, what do you think is the exactly uh, the protocol, what are the conditions where surgery will be required and what are the details about surgery that students who are preparing for NEET PG they need to know?